uh, for uh, the um, relatively short notice uh, that, uh, that you received about uh, this morning's announcement. Uh, today was always going to be the day, but we had actually planned uh, for a little later on today. My schedule changed uh, significantly, and I appreciate everyone's accommodation. On the other hand, uh, much like government, it was uh, a little bit of hurry up and wait because you got here at 10, and then I was late anyway. So I apologize uh, for that uh, as well. I'm joined by uh, Councilman Bill Greenlee, uh, who has been the leading champion on uh, this uh, particular issue of uh, paid sick leave and uh, joined by our uh, co-chairs of uh, the uh, Mayor's Sick Leave Task Force, uh, Natalie uh, Levkovich uh, and Dan Callista. Uh, Natalie is with the Health Federation of Philadelphia, and Dan is the founder and CEO of Dynamic, uh, which is a healthcare industry management consulting firm uh, here in the city. Um, we're here today uh, to formally uh, and officially receive and accept the final report and recommendations uh, from uh, the Mayor's Task Force on paid sick leave. Uh, the uh, co-chairs uh, have uh, been, uh, and all of the members, and I'll talk about them in a second, uh, been very, very diligent in their work, uh, gave uh, me a copy of this report uh, just a few days ago, uh, which I have had a chance uh, to uh, fully read and uh, certainly be prepared to talk about. Paid sick leave is often a difficult and challenging, uh, but also very prominent issue for many cities and some states across America. And folks have been grappling with this particular issue for some time. In Philadelphia, under Councilman Bill Greenlee's leadership, City Council has addressed the question of whether paid sick leave uh, and a requirement for such should be implemented in the city of Philadelphia. As many of you already know, uh, there have been uh, two previous attempts at passing uh, such legislation, and I made a commitment uh, to Councilman Greenlee some time ago that uh, after uh, the most recent effort, uh, should uh, it uh, potentially not be successful in uh, being implemented, uh, that I would in fact uh, create a task force to look at, fully examine, and explore this issue and come back with a set of recommendations. I made that commitment to him some time ago and then followed up uh, earlier uh, this year. My concern at the time uh, was not about uh, the actual issue of whether or not we should have paid sick leave uh, as a policy uh, in the city of Philadelphia, but was really more one of a timing uh, issue than anything else. At the time this legislation was being discussed, taking into consideration uh, many of the concerns uh, shared uh, by a lot of people throughout uh, the city and even in the region as to the potential impact at the same time that we were still recovering uh, from uh, the grips of an incredible Great Recession. Considerations as to whether or not uh, taking such action at the time might potentially hurt the very workers that the legislation was intended to help. Sometimes there can be uh, the law of unintentional consequences. The overall state of our economy at the time and because of the very real possibility of putting Philadelphia at a potentially competitive disadvantage in our regional and local economy. Those were the issues then. Those are still many of uh, the issues today and will continue to be concerns of many uh, in uh, our city. But I also want to be very, very clear. My concerns about uh, the issue as I've laid them out, while they may uh, be the same, I'm also equally, if not even more concerned, about the impact of not having a policy here in the city of Philadelphia would have on our workforce. I recognize that all working people at some time or another, including myself, have to take time away <coughs> from their jobs for health reasons, either for themselves or for their loved ones. I've certainly been very, very fortunate, and any number of us here in this building are very, very fortunate that uh, we, uh, in most instances, don't lose money uh, from our paychecks uh, for taking time off because of a sick loved one or even ourselves from time to time. But for many, many Philadelphians, that is not the case at all. It's also worth noting that the economic landscape has continued to improve in Philadelphia since the time of the original 
paid sick leave legislation was introduced. The unemployment rate in Philadelphia dropped to 7.1% in September of 2014, a 2.8% decrease as compared to September of 2013. The number of jobs in Philadelphia increased by 4,000 from March to April to 675,800. It's the highest number for an April since 2003. The number of Philadelphians employed increased by 5,200 to 598,934. It's the highest number since December of 2001. The number of Philadelphians unemployed decreased by 8,750 to 43,411. It's the lowest number since May of 2008. Since January of 2013, we've announced more than $8.5 billion worth of recently announced, under construction, or completely developed projects. Projects that will transform Philadelphia's skyline and put thousands of people to work, including Comcast's new $1.2 billion Innovation and Technology Center, just to name one. Philadelphia's economy continues to grow and is stronger than it has been in a long time. Given these facts, I believe that a comprehensive review of the likely impact of a paid sick leave uh, policy for employees and private companies and businesses uh, in our overall economy, that the time had come for such a complete review and analysis was not only warranted, but must be done. And I'm proud to accept this report today and its recommendations. The paid leave, the mayor's paid leave uh, the Mayor's Task Force on Paid Sick Leave did, in fact, conduct a complete, thorough, and balanced review of the likely impact on both employers and employees of mandating paid sick leave in Philadelphia and have provided appropriate recommendations. The Task Force co-chairs will talk more about those recommendations in just a moment. Ensuring a robust business environment and and protecting workers' rights requires a careful balancing of interests. We want to do right by everyone, those who are creating the jobs and those who are also looking for jobs. This report will help inform our next steps for our city, in which my administration will work very closely with Councilman Greenlee's office and, of course, all members of City Council. Once again, I want to thank the members of the task force for their service. Natalie Levkovich, the co-chair, executive director, Health Federation of Philadelphia. Dan Callista, co-chair, founder and CEO of Vynamic. Chiama Izzi, Esquire, African Cultural Alliance of North America. Marianne Bellasorte, vice president of policy, strategy and communications for Pathway Pennsylvania, Pathways Pennsylvania. Peter Capelli, the George W. Taylor Professor of Manager, Management and Director, Center for Human Resources at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. Pete Ellis, the owner of El Fuego. Dewetta Logan, Director and Owner of the Smart Beginnings Early Learning Center. Dr. Scott McNeil, Chief Medical Officer, North Philadelphia Health System and Delaware Valley Community Health. Luis Mora. Founder and CEO, Fintana. Uh, Teo uh, uh, Reyes, Teofilo Reyes, National Research Director, Restaurant Opportunity Center, United. Elliot Rosario, Manager, War Cycle Laundry. Nick Shinoy, Executive Director, Asian American Chamber of Commerce of Greater Philadelphia. Ellen Sumakawa, Executive Director, Asian Americans United, and Joanne Zies, Director of Human Resources at Temple University. Can we please give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> Within our city government, uh, we assembled a team to work with uh, the task force. Jackie Dunn from the Finance Department, Noel Marconi, Councilman Greenlee's office, James Satari, Department of Human Service, Human Resources, and Greg Waldman from the Commerce Department. And with that, I'll ask uh, Councilman Greenlee to come up uh, for his remarks. Councilman. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to first thank the mayor for uh, convening this task force and certainly to Natalie and Dan and for all, to all members of the, the task force and the staff for, uh, for I know what was your, your hard work. I, I know it probably caused some headaches over time, but since this was un, uh, an unpaid job, even if we had sick leave, you wouldn't have been able to get any paid sick leave. But um, again, we uh, certainly appreciate it. And I know this will be, uh, form a really strong base for uh, an ordinance to be introduced, and I look forward to working with the mayor on that. Um, and I look for, and and in the end, I think the real winners in this are going to be those workers out there who right now do not have paid sick leave, but will be able to join uh, to to join workers, the growing number of workers around the country that have this. What I believe is a very reasonable benefit, and that I think uh, is good for both employees and employers. Um, so, again, I, I look forward to uh, Mr. Mayor being here uh, sometime, hopefully early next year, uh, while you, when you sign that bill. And, uh, again, we join uh, the, the growing number of cities and states around the country that have this, uh, uh, that have this law. So, uh, again, I, I thank everybody that's involved, and, um, and thank you all for, for your hard work, and I look forward to moving forward on this issue. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. Um, at the risk of um, some redundancy um, in repeating some of the things that the mayor and the councilmen have said, um, I'd like to share with you some of the process uh, that the task force undertook to carry out its mandate. So uh, first of all, um, Mayor Nutter, uh, Councilman Greenlee, uh, on behalf of the task force and uh, my fellow co-chair Dan Callista and myself, we're pleased to now formally and officially convey to you the final report of the uh, paid sick leave task force. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, you were recently quoted in the Inquirer as saying that poverty has an impact beyond the individual. It taints our entire city, the economy, education, health and wellness, the housing market, and opportunity. It prevents Philadelphia as a whole from moving forward and being a prosperous place for every citizen. I accepted your invitation to co-chair this task force in large part because I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. Further, I believe that the enactment of paid sick leave policy that is transparent, fair, and inclusive will be uh, an important step in uh, the direction of shared opportunity and an important step toward the greater protection of the public health and quality of life for all our citizens, including our business community. Uh, the task force was charged with making a uh, thorough and balanced review of the potential impact of paid sick leave on workers and families, on the public health, on employers and the overall economic climate, and to assess the uh, impact that paid sick leave has, uh, has had on the now growing number of jurisdictions that have already enacted paid sick leave mandates. Um, over the course of the last six months, the task force has done just that. Uh, we, including the members of the task force and staff, met on numerous occasions as a committee of the whole as well as subcommittees, and spent many, many hours in between meetings doing research, um, drafting uh, preliminary findings and analyses, uh, debating positions, and drafting recommendations. Uh, this was not an easy process. However, we're proud of the job we have done um, and um, the compromises that we were able to reach. We have all worked hard with genuine conviction uh, to produce this report and now rely on the leadership of you, our policymakers, uh, to make the final decisions in the best interests of all Philadelphians. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Councilman Greenlee, and the entire City Council, I thank you for the support of the task force. My fellow task force members, you've worked diligently on this topic and you've given a great service to the City of Philadelphia. The task force was asked to provide recommendations for how mandatory paid sick leave should be adopted 
by the City of Philadelphia, not debate if it should be adopted. I now have the distinct honor of reviewing a summary of the recommendations with you. The, the task force made specific recommendations on the key aspects contained within most paid sick leaves bills in, in, the, in other jurisdictions. I will review some of these with you now. First, number one, the employer threshold. Employer threshold sets the minimum level of employees for an employer to be required to comply with this legislation. First, in order to streamline regulations, the task force recommends eliminating multiple employer tiers. After significant deliberation, the task force ultimately agreed to recommend that employer, empl after significant deliberation, the task force ultimately agreed to recommend that employers with 15 or more employees will be required to provide paid sick leave for employees. The employer threshold was one of the most challenging topics for the task force. After significant deliberation, the task force created a compromise rather than a consensus. This compromise reflects a balance between covering a significant number of employees while aligning with other business thresholds defined by the government. Second, exemptions. Exemptions refer to those types of workers for whom the task force recommends employers not be required to offer paid sick time. We recommend the following types of workers be exempt. Federal and state employees, employees under a collective bargaining agreement, temporary workers less than 90 days, seasonal workers, as well as interns, adjunct faculty academics, independent contractors, pool workers, including per diem hospital workers, part-time employees working on average less than 15 hours per week over a 90-day period. Third, the accrual rate. The accrual rate refers to how paid sick time is earned for the employee. The task force recommends employees earn one hour of paid sick leave for every 40 hours worked. Fourth, accrual amounts. Accrual amounts refer to the amount of time employees may accrue and how it may be taken. The task force recommends employees may accrue up to 40 hours per rolling 12-month period of employment. The task force also recommends accrued time may be taken in the smaller of hourly increments or the smallest increment that an employer's payroll system permits. Additionally, the task force also recommends that restaurants may require employees to take their leave in four-hour increments or the smallest increment permitted by the payroll system. And fifth, existing employer policies. The task force recommends that employers will not be required to change existing policies nor provide additional paid leave if the employer's existing policy satisfies or exceeds the bill's accrual requirements and can be used for the, under the same conditions. This has been an important topic for many large employers. The task force reinforces the condition that no change of practice is required of employers who currently provide paid sick leave or any form of paid time off that can be used for similar purpose. And finally, monitoring and review. I'd like to speak to the, 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 the ongoing process. We believe that the City of Philadelphia should complete a periodic review to assess compliance, number of employers included, and the impact on employers. If the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania passes a statewide paid sick leave policy, Philadelphia should evaluate its local impact and any inconsistencies. Thank you uh, to the many stakeholders uh, for their active involvement in this process. The task force has given our best effort and worked diligently on behalf of all the citizens of Philadelphia who count on this city to be a vibrant city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Again, to uh, uh, certainly Dan and Natalie, Natalie and Dan, uh, we thank you. Uh, and all of uh, the committee members and all of the city uh, uh, workforce uh, who uh, focus on this particular issue. With that, uh, we'd be glad to try to take any questions that you might have. Steve? Mr. Mayor, um, one of the big differences that I see off the bat is the number of workers covered in this task force report versus the two city council uh, task bills. If I could have one of the uh, folks explain the differences in You know, as I said on my, uh, the topic of employer threshold was a widely discussed topic. 
and uh, something that uh, was you know, challenging. It, it needs to be reinforced that this was a compromise rather than a consensus. And uh, all the task force members and, and the, uh, the co-leads, Natalie and I, uh, worked hard on this topic. Uh, it was a balance between uh, including as many workers as possible, wanting to have as many workers as possible, at the same time finding a, a standard business language uh, for a threshold. You know, defining of small businesses. Is a small business a five-person company, a 10-person company, a 50-person company? There are some different points of view. And the idea of, of creating some consistency for businesses as they walk through the maze of uh, legislation was a topic. And how many people like this? How is it different all told than the two council task force? I'll give it to Natalie. So we're working with estimates. Uh, there are not uh, good data available uh, to come up with an exact number. <clears throat> uh, but using the data uh, that we had at our disposal, uh, we estimate that approximately 120,000 people will be covered of the um, estimated 200,000 who currently are not. Other question? Uh, on, on page 15 of the report, um, it says, we caution city leaders to balance the benefits to employees against the effects of mandating sick leave on the, available, on the ability of local businesses to create and retain jobs and to attract and retain businesses. And that's kind of a part of the debate about this. And I guess I'd like to ask the committee. It sounds like the committee considered the balance and concluded the city of Philadelphia should, as a matter of law, require paid sick leave. Is that, is that right? Uh, what the task force did, um, in addition to representing a, ver a diverse uh, range of points of view and a variety of constituencies, is we looked very carefully at uh, the data available from the uh, increasing number of jurisdictions that already have this law. Uh, and we found that there was um, uh, no credible evidence um, to suggest that um, there had been material harm done to the com business environment and competitive uh, advantage in those cities. Um, therefore, um, the public health advantages and the advantages to workers and families and the potential impact on deep poverty are well documented. So therein lies the balance. I think, yeah, I think they've Obviously, I, was, I did not participate in the, uh, in the task force work, um, but uh, this is the kind of caution, you know, that uh, not only you would expect in this report, but in a variety of reports. There's always a balancing uh, of interests uh, at hand, and I think that, as I said to the, uh, to the group uh, with me right now in, in my office a second ago, uh, you know, What business, in many instances, especially in a local jurisdiction, but I think this is pretty much across the board, what business people want most is certainty. What they rely on is certainty of process, certainty of rules and regulations, certainty of, you know, what do I have to do in order to, you know, start a business, stay in business, grow my business. This is a new thing. And so with uh, at the moment, uncertainty comes discomfort. Uh, and so uh, I think that, um, uh, as Natalie has said, as Dan has said, uh, and as I've tried to articulate a number of times, in an effort to help and support workers for any number of things we've done, we always have to take into consideration either what's the cost, what's the impact, real and perceived, and that we don't want to do things that have an unintended consequence over on the business side that says, that a person says, you know, hey, I just can't deal with it anymore. There's too much stuff going on, and maybe I move. Which hurts the same person, ultimately, that you're trying to help. Because now, potentially, that they don't have a job because the business moved. Now, I don't know that anyone is actually going to move as a result of this. But, when you look at the number of things that we've done as a government over time, we have raised people's taxes on a number of occasions, either for the city or to support education for our kids. We've also created any number of business tax reduction 
uh, incentives and programs at the same time. So we're always, you know, doing something to try to help uh, improve the environment, both for workers and for people who are employers. What we can't create is an environment, what we shouldn't create is an environment where we say, you know, we're for jobs, we just don't like businesses. That, of course, makes no sense whatsoever and does no one uh, any good. So there's always a balance, uh, and I appreciate uh, what the, the task force has done here, and they use the word, you know, that is really a good word. It's not a bad word, especially in the government, which is called compromise, which is called consensus. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't always get all of the aspects that you want, each and every piece, but a good give and take has a person at the end of a process say, you know, I didn't get all the things that I wanted, but I'm okay with this. And it is a good balance and it is, uh, uh, you know, overall can be a good thing uh, for the city of Philadelphia. But wherever there's uncertainty, people get nervous. You know folks here love change, as long as many things can stay the same, right? So can that's, I, can yeah. Yeah. yeah if, I, if I could just add, obviously, I. If, in my perfect world, this bill would have passed a long time ago. But I think the one thing that, that has helped as more cities have passed this, that I think there's sort of been a learning process from those other cities. And I think one thing we saw, and I'll admit my bias in this, but I, I think we've seen that it does not as negatively affect businesses as is, was feared. Uh, again, every city is different. Every business is different. There's no perfect model for anything. But I, I really think it has shown that um, that paid sick leave can certainly benefit employees, but it can, in many ways, benefit employers too. And I think, again, as the mayor said, compromise. And I, I, I can't help but throw throw in here that we have made many, 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 many compromises over time. I feel like uh, I think Noel and I feel like contortionists. We've been over so many backwards so, so many times to try to get a bill done. So uh, we certainly understand compromise, and we understand what the, the, the task force went through. And uh, we keep trying to find that uh, delicate balance to make, uh, to make this work for Philadelphia. So yeah, I mean, you know, a healthy worker is a happy worker, and it's a person that ultimately is going to be more productive uh, and just spreading a lot less stuff around of the workplace. So I, I can literally stay for one more question, then I, unfortunately I have to pop out, but I know Stevie had one for the council. I was just going to ask, appreciating what you said about the art of compromise, yeah. um, where the two council bills depart from this the most, which one, what would be the one component that you'd like to have back? Um, well, you, you touched on the employee uh, threshold. I think that's something that still we're going to be discussing. I think one thing we have to realize is, and I, I, I understand, again, the, the uh, impacts on businesses, but every time you raise the threshold, and if you remember, we, our last bill had it at five, uh, you affect, we can guess the amount, 15, 20,000 workers, something like that, as you go up in increments of five. You know, again, that's not perfect, as Natalie said, the research is a little vague on that. But I think we also have to realize that those workers that you're excluding as you go up in those increments are uh, oftentimes the people that need it the most. They may be lower income. They may not have the benefits that other people have. As I always said, if you go to work dressed like, like we are right here, you probably have paid sick leave already. Yeah, maybe not you, Steve, but you know. Uh, yeah, no, he, he does, he looks good, yeah. Um, but I think that's the thing we have to keep realizing. And, and again, it comes back to that balance thing. But um, I, I think we have to be careful that we want to keep covering the people in the bill and keep protecting the people in the bill that we that need it the most. You know, and, and that's going to be, I think, one of the things we're going to have to, you know, still have a little discussion on. Mayor, just real quickly, we yeah. should have asked this at the beginning. Are you prepared to sign a bill requiring paid sick leave? I expect, um, through our discussions and com the, this is an excellent uh, blueprint and outline. Many of these recommendations I am certainly fine with. Um, I think, you know, as the councilman uh, knows and, and I knew uh, for a good while, uh, translating a great report into a piece of legislation, always the challenge of the language, the provisions, the kinds of things the councilman talked about, you know, the employer level and accrual rates and those kinds of issues. 
the, the task force clearly got it right, uh, I think, in terms of balance. Uh, I think they're absolutely in the ballpark uh, of uh, the kind of policy that we should have uh, here in the city, and it is my hope uh, that through our continued uh, discussions uh, and, and meetings and negotiations uh, that a, a bill would come forward uh, that I would uh, be comfortable uh, supporting and, uh, and signing. Obviously, it still has to go through the legislative process, uh, but I think with the great leadership of Councilman Greenlee, um, you know, it will be whatever it's going to be uh, with his uh, leadership. Uh, and it's my expectation that, you know, given the calendar, sometime early next year uh, that uh, a bill uh, comes forward, uh, ends up on uh, my desk, and I would like to sign a reasonable, rational, consensus-based uh, uh, paid sick leave bill uh, for the city of Philadelphia. This task force has done excellent work. That work needs to be recognized and ultimately, uh, I think, rewarded uh, with a policy uh, that we can reach uh, compromise and consensus on uh, and move the city forward. All right, I got to go. Sorry. Thanks.